another edition of Rex the Adequate, would-be chef. Tonight we're going to venture into soups and we're going to make a pretty simple dish out of this right here. This is a sweet yellow onion. This is actually a walla walla onion and it is actually a very simplistic dish yet it's going to take us a bit of time mainly because you have to truly nurture the onions in the sauteing process to get the true flavor of this dish but they say that once it does come together uh, it's got some delicious flavor to it so we're going to go ahead and begin to cut this up and get going this is about a two hour process it's already late into the evening uh, so I'm sort of ta and taking on this endeavor, endeavor a bit late but nevertheless uh, hopefully it'll be good so let's get to it okay let's go ahead and get started now I'm trying a couple of different camera angles I'm trying to get the the best surface possible uh, we want to clean up these onions and so what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to cut the outer shell of these off like I said it's always better just to have a garbage can cut that outer ring off now she says to use a yellow onion I have a lot of these uh, sweet on yellow sweet onions left over so that's what I want to use and we're going to be using approximately one uh, one and a half pounds so we're gonna weigh these up and see how they look all right once again clean these up a bit so cut the ends of them off and I usually just take off this first outer layer it'll pull off that old, all that all that dead skin so clean up after myself here and there we go okay now she says she wants these thinly sliced so I'm just gonna go ahead and cut these in half put them on their side let me see if I can get a better angle for you now see they're a little they're honestly they're a little slick you know what we're gonna make this a little bit easier we'll be right back okay now instead of holding those nice slick onions I have a food processor and it's going to do the job for me so I've already set it up I've got a cutting blade in there we need to pull this out you saw that I cut these in squares we're just gonna put that right in there put this on turn the sucker on and there we go nice sliced onions I'm just gonna go ahead and finish these up All right, I'd like to see you cut that fast. As you can see, look at this thing, it's chocked full and everything, it's all the right size, all the right consistency. Uh, a lot better than what I can do uh, in any given time. And being that we're on a time crunch, I think that's really important. Okay, with the timing of this dish, I'm not gonna put a lot of the, the ingredients out in uh, pre-measured containers just yet. Uh, basically, what we are gonna start with is uh, one and a half, approximate one and a half, this is a little bit more, probably one and three quarter pounds of uh, thinly sliced yellow onions. And we're gonna basically do a really slow saute with, of course, nothing but butter and some really good olive oil. And basically we're gonna use three tablespoons of butter uh, and a tablespoon of olive oil to start with. Uh, then um, we're gonna salt and pepper that to taste and then we're going to use four quarts. I picked a Wolfgang Puck uh, beef broth. We're going to use four quarts of that. And we're going to mix in um, about a cup of, or half a cup, I believe, of the uh, white vermouth. And at the very end of this dish, uh, we are going to put in uh, some cognac, three tablespoons of cognac. And then what we do while all of this is cooking, I'm going to take this uh, French bread. We're going to cut it up. We're going to roast any moisture out of it so it's nice and crunchy. It's going to give us a good bed to uh, put our soup on. And we're going to grate up some fresh Parmesan, probably in the food processor. And we're going to coat the liberally on the top. And then we're going to eat it. 
So let's go ahead and get some of this stuff going on the grill, or the stove top I should say, and get this dish uh, so we can get it into my stomach. Hold on to your wine glasses, let's start cooking. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do, let's go ahead and get the stove on. Now, uh, I, I've got approximately a little over a, tab a tablespoon of good olive oil and almost four tablespoons of butter because I have increased my onions by just a little bit. I didn't want it to go to my, the onion to go to waste. So we're just going to go ahead. I have a heavy bottom. Uh, she says skillet. This is my uh, Dutch oven, but it should work just fine. We're going to go ahead and just pop that right into there. Okay, the butter's just ready. We got it mixed with the oil, and I've got it at low heat. Now, we're not trying to truly uh, brown the onions at this point. Uh, they're gonna cook on, under low heat in this butter mixture for approximately 15 minutes. We'll uncover it from there. For another 30 to 40 minutes, we're gonna turn it up to a medium heat, and we're gonna start the browning process. So this is the time when you're gonna have to really babysit this. Uh, once this process is done, and we get the uh, uh, beef stock and everything else going, it's pretty much gonna take care of itself for about 45 to 45 minutes or so so let's see what we got there we go as you can see my butter's nice I, I mean I have a very low heat the but butter is just sort of um, popping on me uh, I got all of my uh, onions here so we're just gonna go ahead pop those right in there she says to use an approximate four quart saucepan uh, uh, this is definitely, uh, this is a six quart, so it should be more than enough. So at this point, I'm just going to mix these up a little bit. And turn the heat up just a smidge, just like that. Make sure those onions there are separated, which they are. Beautiful. Now we're just going to cover it. And we're going to let it sit, let this baby sit for about five, 15 minutes, and we'll see what it looks like. Okay, it's been 15 minutes, and let's go down and see what the stove looks like. Beautiful. There we go. Oh, you can see they're already steaming. Go ahead and take a fork here, or a spoon. Let's move these around. Mm-hmm, sm they smell delicious. What we're going to do at this point is, like I said, we're going to turn it up to a good medium heat. And it's already starting to go. That's a, I definitely have it at medium. I'm going to start my kitchen timer now. Let's go 35 minutes. We'll start. Now at this point, I've got a, a really good sized teaspoon of salt here. We're going to go ahead and sprinkle that on. Again, I've sort of slightly increased it. Uh, due to the amount of onions and about a quarter teaspoon you should have a quarter teaspoon of uh, sugar so we're gonna go ahead and sprinkle that on now basically believe it or not the um, the sugar is gonna help these onions brown a bit that's why we put the sugar in there and we're gonna leave this off heat for okay I had a small emergency there. I ran out of uh, disk space on my camera. I'm going to change spoons. I don't, looks like I might be scratching the bottom of that, which they definitely don't want to do. Um, so we've been, we're going about good, it's 25, about 25 minutes remaining, or you could almost say still 30 minutes remaining, uh, if I was going to go with the 40 minutes. Uh, however, I'm not really browning, uh, so I'm a little concerned with that. Um, there's, they should be turning to a rich uh, golden brown, and we're nowhere near that yet, so I'll, we'll keep a close eye on this and go from there. Okay, we're about a good uh, 20 minutes into this. Uh, I've turned the heat up just a little bit. We're starting to get some good browning action. Uh, let's go down to the pot and see what, how it's going. Sort of sounds like a, a football guy. Uh, the game's going well. We got a lot of action, but let's get down to the field and see what's happening. Bob? Yes, Jim, as you can see here, the onions are turning quite brown in the pan. Uh, it, it's been some great action. It's really been heating up, and uh, as we can tell, it's great. 
sorry. All right, I'll stop being a goob. But as you can see, we are definitely getting more of a golden brown. They're becoming quite soft. Um, again, we're, my clock shows 14 minutes. Might even go a little bit longer. I want these a nice, golden, delicious brown uh, when we kick this in. Now, what you'll see on this right over here, I'm gonna try to zoom in for you, uh, is the beef stock. And I've went ahead and I've taken uh, two quarts of stock and I've placed it into this pan. In another uh, few minutes, I'm gonna, actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and start heating this thing up. We're gonna bring this up to a boil. We want it nice and boiling. And once it's boiling, we're gonna go ahead and take it and I'm just gonna pour it right into that pot and we're gonna start cooking it all together. That's about the time that I can back away. Right now I'm sort of running in between. I'm editing up some asparagus tip video that you hopefully you've already seen and uh, trying to cook at the same time. So it's a lot of work to try to get this whole process done, but hopefully I'm up for it in the future. Cause trust me, I was tired tonight. Last thing I wanted to do was come home, film, talk to you and uh, edit video. But this is the hobby that I've picked for the time being and I'm gonna follow through with it. See you in a few minutes. Okay, we have a bit of a problem. Uh, you should really should watch this pot while you're cooking it. Uh, again, I've been sort of thinking they weren't browning that well, so I was doing some video editing. Well, when I came back in, uh, we're browning pretty good now. Um, but what we can also see here, and make sure I got a good shot here, there you go. I'll even zoom in just a tad for you. What we have here is I'm getting a little browning on the bottom of my pan, which I'm afraid is going to turn into more burning. So um, hopefully it's just going to add some good flavor. I don't want to get a charcoal burn, but uh, we're definitely nice golden brown. We've got eight minutes remaining. I've got my broth going on high here, bring, trying to bring that up to a boil, and I think we're going to be good to go. So we're almost there, and then we'll be moving to the next stage. Oh. God, is it that time already? Wow. So we are actually approaching on uh, the timer about to go off. I have my uh, beef, bro beef broth that's just about to hit a boil, and my onions are a deep golden brown, which is exactly what we want. One of the best things, though, about waiting when you have the 30-minute wait of cooking is enjoying a good glass of French wine. Um, I think you should try it. This is a Bordeaux. I actually got it from my stroganoff recipe that I didn't drink. And I thought, you know, what would it hurt to have a little glass of vino? I'm not sure the fr French pronunciation. Go ahead and comment me if you're watching out there and tell me uh, the French word. I could Google it, but it's more fun. And this way we're a little bit more interactive. So let's get down to the cooking here and uh, see what's going on. Cameraman, can you just zoom down, please? Oh, thank you. Man, you're good. Now, as you can see, we should have a nice golden brown. Yeah, I see the black there. You see that black? That's all gonna come out the minute we pour our, our beef uh, stock in. Now, what we do wanna do, now that they're golden brown, is I got three tablespoons of flour. I wanna go ahead and we're gonna sprinkle the flour right on in there, like so. Make sure we get all of it. And I'm going to kitchen timer, cook it for three more minutes with the flour. Alright, everything's coming together. We got golden brown onions, we got them coated with flour right now, and we've got about a minute 15 left on the timer. And once that goes off, we're going to go down here, we're going to take our boiling beef stock, and we're gonna pour that directly in to the, over the onions. And it says to do that off heat. So I'm just gonna turn the heat off the gas stove and pretty much it's, it's off heat at that point. Um, what we do then as well is, let me, I have white vermouth. She uses it either a dry white wine or a half a cup of a white vermouth. First, we're gonna pour in the beef stock. And at that point, uh, we'll pour the, We'll pour the vermouth in and we'll mix it and we'll season it to taste with salt and pepper. Okay, as you can see, we're golden brown. Uh, I do have some burning going on under here, which it does concern me that that's gonna affect the taste. Um, I do, at this point, I've turned off the heat on both and we're just gonna pour this right in. Look at that. Now, 
once we've done this, now once we pour that in, we're going to go straight for the white vermouth. We're going to pour that in as well. And now we're just going to season this to taste. So what I need to do is get a spoon. Okay, we have everything in there. Uh, at this point, we're just going to let me taste this. I'm going to put some salt and pepper. Okay. Now, at this point, we're good to go. We've got everything in. You see we have our onions. We have our broth in. I've seasoned it to taste with salt and pepper. Now we're going to turn this back on. And what we're going to do is we're going to simmer this mixture. Let me come up here. What we're going to do at this point is we're going to simmer this mixture uh, for 30 to 40 minutes or more, depending. And uh, you want it partially covered. So I'm just going to turn the lid sort of sideways on it and uh, just have it nice and partially covered. We're going to cook this down, let all the um, juices come together, and we'll go from there. Okay, at this point, it's pretty much hands off all the soup and the broth and everything's in there. I've seasoned it to taste. I've partially covered it and we're going to simmer it for over 40 minutes on the stove. It, while this is cooking, we're going to need to prep the uh, baguette bread in the oven. It's going to take approximately 30 minutes and uh, you'll see that in just a second. Now the type of knife you use to cut bread usually is a little bit different. This here is a nice clean blade, although sharp and although it will go through uh, bread, isn't really your best option. Uh, this is a nice serrated blade. Believe it or not, I'm holding the Miracle Blade 3. I don't know if you ever saw the infomercials. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the Miracle Blade 3. It'll go through a bottle of olive oil and still go through a loaf of bread like this in a matter of seconds. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, the Miracle Blade 3. That's exactly what this is. And actually, I do like it for a bread knife because it does have that serrated edges. I'm going to show you just how well it works right here. Follow me. Okay, like I said, ladies and gentlemen, I'm only going to do half of this. Put the other half away for a rainy day. Like I said, ladies, it'll cut through this bottle and yet still will go through bread just like this. Ladies and gentlemen, you can cut cement with this. It is an amazing piece of machinery. The Miracle Blade 3000. Now, ladies and gentlemen, how, would, how much would you pay for this knife? Would you pay $15? Would you pay $20? Well, I'm giving it to you for just $35. $35 and I'll throw in this half bottle of vermouth for free. All right, I'm done being cheesy. Now, you do take the Miracle Blade 3000. Note the serrated knife cuts a nice, clean pieces. You're going to want these in uh, one inch rounds. As you see here, just cut right through it all. Okay, basically what we're going to do is we're making big croutons. That's a big crouton. So you're just going to take it. We're going to put them all in this pan here. just like so and it's going to go into the oven again 350 degrees for 30 minutes at 15 minutes you're going to pull this out you're going to baste it with some olive oil shove on both sides and it goes right back in for another 15 minutes okay now these have been baking here for approximately uh, 15 minutes already they're already nice and crispy I'm just ooh, and they are hot so we're just going to try to get some olive oil on these little suckers. I'm not looking to give them a bath in olive oil. I just want them to have a slight bit on the outside. It's not the best baster. Excellent. Now that I've got them all, they're all flipped over. They're already really dry. She still says do them for 30 minutes, so we're going back in for another 30 minutes. Okay, we are almost done. It's been approximately 60 minutes now since the last time I talked to you. The uh, onion soup has been simmering 
and it's looking very good. We're about to pull it off heat. Now right before we serve it, I uh, went to the store and I picked up a really nice bottle. It was actually on sale of co a fine cognac. Uh, we're going to stir in three tablespoons of this straight into it. And we're going to take those nice toasted rounds which are about to come right out of the oven. I'm going to put those, like probably three of them, in the bottom of my bowl. You put then we're going to pour the soup in. And uh, I don't like Swiss cheese. You can use Swiss. Uh, she says Swiss or a Parmesan. I got a French imported Parmesan cheese today, nice and fresh. I ran it through the food processor so it's nice and light. She says liberally, so be happy. Pass around the cheese. We're going to put the cheese on the top, let it melt just a little bit. I think we're going to have a fun time. See you in a sec. Excellent. You can see here, uh, these are nice. They're very hot. Um, and as you can hear, as they hit that plate, uh, there is no more, whoo, they're smoking hot. No more water in those. Those things are like seriously croutons. Remember, use a hot pad. Pans are hot. And then, since those are ready, we're going to come right over here. Okay. I have my soup. And as you can see here, it's, uh, it's very hot. It's, it's boiled down nicely. Uh, at this point, we're going to stir in our cognac, just like I said. So let's just do three good... There's one, two, three. No idea exactly what taste we're going to get out of this with the cognac, but you know what? Julia said it, so I believe it. Okay, sadly, I don't have a ladle. I definitely need to pick one of these up. But what we're going to do is we're going to take these half-inch rounds. I'm going to take uh, three of them. And notice I just put it in the bowl. Just like that. Um, for a ladle, I'm just going to use a coffee cup. Scoop this up. I'm going to pour it right over that bread. Like that. That's clean, so you can just leave it right in there. As Julia says, what people don't know in the back won't hurt them. So you have that. Now remember what she said? Let's liberally take this fresh Parmesan, and we're just going to coat that all along the top there. Look at that. Let that sit for just a couple of minutes. Be right back, and we're going to eat. Well, hello. Oh, what's wrong with the video? Oh my god, it stopped. What? This stupid thing keeps pausing like this. What is wrong? <laughs> no, ladies and gentlemen, I ended up deleting the video or something of that nature. I'm not quite sure uh, what happened. All I know is it's not there, so I've freeze framed for you, and we're going to talk just a second about this soup. Uh, it was quite delicious. I enjoyed it very much. Once that cheese melts on top, uh, it's really good. Now, obviously, some of you guys might want Swiss cheese. I don't like Swiss cheese at all. So, uh, yeah, the, the, the big, uh, baguettes in it was very nice. Uh, definitely have a good red wine. For some reason, to me, this soup's like a meaty uh, tasting. It just has a meat a taste, and a good red wine goes very well with it. Also, please don't forget to try the Miracle Blade 3000. It can bring joy to your kitchen, as it did to mine. Thank you for watching. Keep holding on to that wine glass, and I'll see you very soon. Thanks.